This is the future. Okay, let me show you guys what you get for 6,800 Rand. You're gonna get a Wendy house like this. Don't let the pictures fool you guys. This is what you're gonna get at the end of the day. Stupid pallet planks, full of holes, not even grade B, I would say it's like a grade C plank. It's whatever they could scrounge up. Uh, let me show you inside. This will be the, the build quality that you can expect from these windy guys. It's going to charge you 6,800 Rand for a windy. Skew, patched, pallet work. That's what you're gonna get. This was one of the motivations for me to build my own bar. Now, let's chat. So why did I decide to build this bar myself? Well, three major things. First of all, I took it as a challenge on myself to prove a point. Um, there's people that told me it's unrealistic and that I'm un impractical, unpractical to build this bar myself. And I decided to prove a point. And that was my first main reason. So yeah, I am kind of keeping this as a grudge because I took this as a personal insult to my to my will and my my determination <clears throat> to have a place of my own where I can have a social experience, have a place where I can do some entertainment and all that kind of stuff. And for you guys, well, I mean the guys know if you're having a great night and everything's going well. At the end of the night, you're not in the mood to carry stuff up and down and, and carry it back into the house. You want a place where you can just close everything up, lock everything up and go, go to sleep. And then tomorrow, you can sort out the cleaning and sort out everything else. So that's what motivated me to build this place. I also wanted a place where I can kind of get away from it all, which is my own little personal spot, where I can just relax and get away and get out of the house, that kind of stuff. And next point is, is price. I mean, 6,800 Rand for crap like this, I'm sure, and I was confident I could do much, much better for about the same price. So let me give you the three quotes. The first quote was a standard 2x3 meter Wendy for 6,800. Then I asked the guy, is it possible for you to cut the opening up for me on the side? And then he first told me no. Then after about... A week he contacts me back and asks me or told me that he can do it but then the price is going to be 7800 so I asked him how the hell can you charge me more money for less wood you're cutting away half the bloody wall but you want to charge me more money so I, I thought I, I could more or less get away with the same price for better quality wood. and the wife also told me she's not looking for this kind of pallet wood she's looking for this multi pine uh, plank finish and it's a bit more expensive so I thought well we'll see if it fits into the budget after a few weeks I decided you know what I'm not in the mood for the for the effort and the time because this is the biggest thing that 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 waste the time of painting and building it it's, it's time consuming and I've been building this thing now for 27 days from 7 in the morning to 4 in the afternoon except for the two days that I work day shift every week and I can understand why you want to charge 12 to 20,000 Rand for the thing that I built uh, because of the labor. But if you have four or five people in your group and they're all building mass production houses, then labor isn't an issue. So, but if you personalize and customize and do it personally uh, one by one for people, I can understand why you want to charge 28,000 or so <clears throat> for this kind of board that I built. Anyway, so. I decided, okay, let me, let me get a guy to build this for me, since it's going to cost about the same. And at the end of the day, when I told him I wanted to use Naughty Pine, the price went up to 12500 So I can tell you guys right now, I'm way below the budget. 
of 12 and a half but I'm more or less within the budget of the middle cut so if you guys want to know exactly how much it cost me to build the thing that I'm going to show you you'll have to wait for the last video I'll put up some stats I'll tell you how many screws I used and how many of this and how many of that which is quite interesting it's actually well, well overwhelming so without further ado let's start this project and let's start this video and I can show you exactly what I did and how I did it I don't want to show you the completed thing it's standing over there I'm busy putting up the roof so I don't want to show you what I've done yet it's gonna spoil the whole thing so let's start from the beginning the floor enjoy I think this is a nice size plank for the flooring it's uh, 38 by 114 construction wood so I think this will make a nice strong floor so this is how we start with our new bar for, um, for myself for here in my social area um, I wanted to do a pergola as well but I unfortunately didn't have the funds to buy all the wood to build a pergola so at the moment I've got the gazebo up here um, permanently which is not too bad it works once this um, roof goes I've got another one that I can put on so I've got an extra roof so the idea is to build the bar here and then I bought this table the other day this table is going to stay here this is where my fire pit is so all I need to do here now is I want to put two plants in there I want to put grass in here we're going to keep this as my fire pit this is my social area we'll have the bry stand there and then the bar then this place is finished so this will be phase two phase one was building this wall leveling the area and paving this so phase one is complete and now we're going to try and finish phase two also I need to plant that put some flowers but uh, that will come with time it's not going to come immediately but for this video we're just going to do the bar let's hope this will be a success okay guys today we are officially starting the construction of the floor I've got my workstation set up with my music and my wood and my saw and levels and squares and everything you need to make sure this thing is going to be perfect. So um, the saw mill sized it up for me by cutting it just a little bit longer than it's supposed to be, which is good because more is better than less. You don't need to have short. Now we can rather cut it the size we want. So this is our three meter one. I'm going to cut that one quickly. For today I'm going to use the hand saw. I'm going to go this afternoon and get myself an electrical circular saw. But for now, unfortunately, I don't have a vehicle. The Runex is in for repairs. I didn't see... I didn't see... I, did, I wasn't in the mood to fix that car. It's already costing me almost 10,000 bucks. But at least I know it's going to be fine. So first of all, we're going to cut all the sizes all the wood up to size the way we want it and we're going to assemble it just roughly here on the floor where it's going to be standing to make sure that all the wood is the same length and built correctly once all the sizes are cut we're going to paint it with this uh, wood treatment it's this uh, carbolinium we're going to treat the wood with that and then tomorrow or depending on how long it's going to take me to paint three layers of paint on all these planks uh, it will probably be only on Saturday we'll do the assembly I have to work night shift tonight so unfortunately I cannot be busy the whole day story of my life so let's continue okay so this is the general idea of how it's going to look I need to leave a, a space at the back for me to walk when I put the planks in and I tighten them down and I want to paint in future I need to be able to move behind it so and of course if these water here is going to drain in the rain time from the neighbor's house it's going to come out here as space to come down and walk away not keep on uh, spilling against my my bar okay I started to treat the wood this is the first layer they say with this carbolinium if it's still 
fresh wood, you need to give it three coats. You can give all three immediately. So I'm going to finish this one plank. Okay, I just finished staining all these wood or treating them with coralinium. As you guys can see, there's leaves on it because this stupid, nice looking tree keeps on dropping off this very fine leaves and it's really irritating. But luckily it doesn't stick to the to the stain. I can just wipe it off with a, a lappy, so that's fine. Um, so I prepared my area where we're gonna put the, the bar. But here's my biggest problem. This wall is not straight. It tapers down. This wall is not 90 degrees with this wall, so it also tapers down. Even the house is not straight. It's narrower here than at the back. So how do I determine what is straight? I'm basically gonna follow the table and the gazebo. Um, I cannot even take this wall because this wall is also not 90 degrees with the wall that I'm standing against. This wall is skew. So I have to more or less look at where I wanna look and then place it on, maybe follow this line and just look this way and I hope it's straight enough even though it's going to have a, a skew kind of a gap here at the back as you can see how this bricks are going to a corner that's what's going to happen with the, with the bar so now my next step is going to be to take bricks which are lying there and we are going to set up our corners and we see how many bricks we're going to need and then we're going to start assembling. I first want to level the thing or level the frame before we start putting the, the ribs in. So let's do that. Okay guys, so this is basically where it's going to stand. I took it parallel with this wall but I might turn it a little bit more because it seems off. Uh, I want to look this way. Uh, so this corner might go a bit forward a bit and this one might go but it can't go any more back, so that will probably go forward a bit. But to help me out, I'm putting these brackets in the corners, 90 degree brackets, to make sure that the corners are exactly 90 degrees, which should put my square 90 degrees. And then I can move it where I want it before I tie it down properly. And then uh, we'll level it, and then we'll start leveling each and every. Uh, cross section that goes in. This is going to be quite a step. On this corner, it's three bricks high. On that side, I took the lowest brick that I had. I don't want the frame to be standing on the ground itself, uh, especially if it rains. That side is two bricks. So I'm planning on putting the door on this side. And everything is level. I checked it with the level. You can see the difference with the plank lying on the floor. But the difference there is. So this is going to be quite a step for me to get into. But it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. I have to get it level. Now I'm going to put the, the ribs in. Okay guys, this is as far as I got. Um, I've completed the frame. Well, I'm not totally done. I'm going to put another piece in the middle to stop it from bouncing. And then I need to level it out. It is level, but I need to put more bricks or more supports everywhere in the middle and maybe on the on the sides. But unfortunately I found yesterday that the wood is warped. This angle is exactly 90 degrees. That one is exactly 90 degrees. But as you can see at the tip, the wood is bending towards this way. That's why there's a gap. And this one is bending inwards as well. And um, because of that, it's, it's buckling in the middle, so there's gaps everywhere in the middle. And some of this wood here has actually twisted. So I did the best I can with what I had. At least you won't see this wood again. This is just the frame. So when we put the planks up, it should still be, I'll still cut it to look like it's 90 degrees at least. But I'll work from these two corners since I know these two corners are perfect. But everything has been put up level 
and even the planks like this is level as far as I could manage with the twisting but yeah the frame is complete that's it guys the frame is done now we just need to put the floorboards hi guys so here we are again at the local sawmill I got myself the next planks for my flooring and yeah as you guys can see I don't have a bucket I have to use my car for everything so how do you like this setup just to make sure the boot doesn't open up <laughs> I tied the boot down around the planks around the boot it will drive nice and slow so I was so lucky I got this uh, decking board for next to nothing because this isn't your grade A decking board this is grade B which means it's got a bit of a scuff mark it's got a bit of a rough patch here um, sorry yeah which you won't actually see once I've painted it and it's for the floor and it's gonna go inside so I don't really bother or worry about this being perfect I mean I'm not buying it for a client it's got a small little hole here and then I took five grade A ones these ones at the bottom because the other ones were just too bad I don't want holes right straight through the plank so yeah let's go put this on top of our framework I'm sorry guys I tend to get so caught up in my project that I forget to take videos sometimes um, forgive me so all I did since we came back from the sawmill is yesterday I cut the planks to size and I also cut spacers specific spacers specific thicknesses for each support now um, this floor is exactly level and it is sturdy it's not even moving one bit and this morning I just quickly treated all the spaces with the carbon linium and what I'm doing now is I'm just putting the planks back on to see where I should start fastening uh, them because I need to know when are they parallel so I decided to take the center of the board take the center of a plank which is this one and put it center and center and just pack the rest now on this side we have a major overhang um, which I can trim off later but the thing is this plank is bent it's warped as you can see there's a big gap at that end so I might have to rotate this one around I just want to pack the rest quickly and see if I'm short on this side I can always move the planks up a little bit but I was just trying to see how I can make sure that this uh, plank is exactly parallel with the outer edges and it's difficult since this one is warped on the inside and this one is warping to the outside but those two corners there is exactly 90 degrees so I'm using those two corners as a guide and then once the planks are sorted and I know exactly where I want to put them down I'm going to take out the one at the end or maybe the one in the middle paint it and tighten it down so they can use so I can use that as a reference point and then the rest I can take them off and pack them as I finish treating them okay guys here we are this is done the floor is finished it is 100% square as you know the, the so wood on the side did go a bit skew so that's why that is there but otherwise the rest is 100% square so now we can concentrate next week on building the walls. Yeah. Hey guys, thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up. And remember to subscribe to this channel. And also hit that bell icon so that you can get notified of my next up and coming video. Until next time guys, whatever you do, keep it safe. Cheers.